So now let's share our screen for those who are uh, not here in the class today. Hopefully you'll follow along as well. Today we have the... Hmm? Nobody's attending. They will watch the video. Yeah. Of course, it's, it's different when you're here live, right? You can ask questions. Yes, yes. Uh, your advantage is you're here and I can see your problems there. Okay, so now where are we now? We are in B11 Arc 2. This, right, Rajak? Correct? Let's continue this. We are still recording. Oh, we did our interior as well, right? We, we did our interior walls and all this. So now, since it's part of architecture, since it is part of architecture, we will start with what you call facing. Just like what we just discussed now. Facing in Revit. Okay, I'll show you how it's done. So let's go to, uh, let's say, level one. So for example, this is an existing building already, okay? But um, no, I think it's better if we start a new small project. We'll start a new small project. Not uh, new project. Default metric, yeah. Okay. So a small project. So before you start a project. You know, the way you already have the levels here. So we'll just have a small, like a structure. When you create anything, let's say in level one, when you create anything, let's say create a wall, an architectural wall. Look at the properties here, okay? The properties, you have all the geometric properties, right? Starts at level one and will end at level two. Okay, in the top offset, nothing and everything. Then you have here at the bottom. Why is not here? Need to add that parameter. Okay, let's start first. Uh, like. I think it's not in my parameter. It's not in the parameter. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, right? So, for example, if I created this wall by default in the facing. Right here in the pacing parameter, these are all created as a new construction. So it's it's like from zero. So we'll try to create one building and we'll convert it into an existing situation. Okay. So for example, this is a wall, and then we'll let's create a few more walls. Okay, let's put some windows. Doors, let's put a door. Okay. 
And then, of course, we need a root, right? Let's put a small root on it. So if I put print, we'll put it in level two. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just a simple root. No. Um, little over uh, 600 only. Slow. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Roof again. Level two. Overhang six hundred. Okay, by the call that. Okay, let's make it. And finish. Okay, so we have now our building. Small structure. Okay. So what we'll do now, there's no floor here. Let's yeah, put a floor. floor. Level one, let's put a floor. Oh, it should be this. Put a floor. Finish. Okay, so we have a complete building. So let's see that. And then let's take all of this and all are there, right? Yeah. And uh, the face created, it will be existing. So this is now the existing situation. Okay. This is the existing situation. So, for example, you will be demolishing most of the interior walls mm -hmm. and maybe one of the exterior walls okay so what we'll do in the plan view or in the 3d let's say this wall you want to demolish it because you want to add an additional part of the building so you want to demolish it so what you'll do here in the face created is existing correct right we'll not change it but in the face demolish We'll put here that during new construction, this will be demolished. So we'll put new construction, it will be demolished. At that stage, see what happens. Automatically, it is having some dotted line. Okay? Yeah, you will have a nice drawing showing that this will be demolished. This is new and all this. And this is existing. So now we don't have new construction yet here, right? We did not add anything yet. This is existing, and uh, we are showing which one needs to be de demolished. So you understand the sense, right? So now let's go to uh, the plan plan view, level one. And let's say we want to keep this big room as a wall, but the rest of it will demolish. So we'll take this wall. And since both are, will be the same, we take that wall. And what will happen, same one. So this will be demolished during new construction. Right? Yeah, if you demolish the wall, obviously the, the wall, the door will be removed. Right? But it is the different way that if you remove only the door, the wall can stay. Right? So, but obviously we remove the, the wall, the door will be removed. Okay? So now we have that. So, for example, you have windows that you want to remove only. Okay. So, let's say these two windows, you want to remove it. So, we'll change this here. That this will be demolished in the new construction. So also, it is having like that dotted line. And this can even be changed. It can be like red color or blue color, whatever you want to see. So, now let's move to the new construction. What do you want to do after demolishing these things? So now we demolish this part, so we need to build something, right? So now what we'll do is we will be uh, extending. Yeah, extending it a little bit, right? So uh, we'll create a wall, architectural, same. So before you draw the wall, change this already. Change the type. In the facing, where is the facing data? 
Ah, it's not yet there. So let's draw first of all. Okay, let's draw a wall here. Okay. Just a little bit of an extension again. Like that. Like this and going that way. Okay. And one more here. So you know now that this wall, this wall, this wall, and this walls, this will be under new construction, right? So here, face created new construction. And of course, it will never be demolished. You will put none there. So these are now new construction. Yeah. Actually, if you look closely, it should be like gray color. The existing will be different color. But anyway, that should be fine. So let's say you have additional walls here. You want to create a wall here for the new construction. So you just right click this because they are similar. They are both new construction. Maybe you add a wall here. Going straight away like that. So these are new construction. Click that. It is new construction already. So if you add a door there, say you want a bigger door. Have a, let's load the family of good doors. Door. Let's uh, get some commercial. Nice door. This one. And you choose the color. I mean, choose the size. Oh, this is English, right? This is English. Answer. Let's go again. Load. We were in the Roman. We were in the Imperial. Go to English. Doors. Commercial. Let's get this. Okay. Then what height you want? Let's get the uh, twenty one hundred. No, eighteen hundred by twenty one hundred. So you have one big door. Remember, we already removed this door, right? We remove this door. Uh, remove this window. Then, of, of course, when you have this window, you have a, a vacant, uh, you have a, a slot there where you remove the window. So if we look at this view, actually, this view, what is that elevation? That would be yeah. Wall, right? Yeah. Hello. So that would be like what? West elevation, right? So there is a hollow there, right? So we need to cover it with something, right? See, that will be your existing. Wall, right? Yeah, we can make a wall. So if we create this, uh, we say uh, create similar. Okay. Or maybe we can have like uh, um, something else. What can we put here? Can we put a door here? You want to make a wall, similar wall, let's say. It's similar. Where is the pre it's similar? You cannot. Let's go to the plan view. Let's try if we can get a wall here. A wall. Let's say we get this uh, brick wall. So it will be different, right? Yes. This brick. See if we can put it here. From here to here. Hmm? It says there is a problem, but we'll see. Okay. Because of the height. That the reason is the height. Yeah. So let's go to the elevation again. What happened? Where is the wall? <laughs> we created the wall, right? Level one, we have the wall here. This wall is in new construction, okay? Let's look at the view type of the elevator. So let's, let's 
There should be a wall here. Spacing, very spacing. Okay. It is because of the face filter. Okay. So right now we are showing everything. It says show all. Okay. If you say show new only, that means all of the things that will be demolished will not be here anymore. So that means if I say show new, see, this is actually the, we have a full wall here, right? But the wall, it should be up to here only, right? But there is this uh, opening. Don't worry, we'll take care of that opening. the wall but why is the opening where are we looking at now show show new new construction yeah new construction is it should be show new plus existing right show new show previous page Show complete. <laughs> ah, ah, there is the show complete. Because we created this wall. These are new walls, right? This is a new wall. What does it say? See, there's a brick wall. Let's just show how it looks like. Realistic. It's not showing. It should show properly. Because if I click it, this is that one, right? But it looks like all there. Yeah, it's supposed to be generic. Yeah. Uh, let's change it to masonry. Please uh, demolish none. Facing. This is the face filter. Show complete. If you show demo plus new, show previews but demo. Previews plus new. Show complete is actually different from show all. Show all means it's showing the demolition and also the new construction. Yeah. But if we say show complete, show complete means this is already the completed part. So the demolish is not shown anymore. So if, if you look actually on the other side, let's try to complete our building first, right? Let's go to uh, back to the level one plan. This is a little bit tricky, this one here. Maybe we can align it here. Let's see. Try to align this one. Align that wall here. Where is the wall here? Lost. We change this type of wall. I'll protrude it a little bit. Okay. So it will show. So this. So you will have a space there to put your things in some display. Right. Yeah, shelf, right? And then we'll prepare a small drawing to show the uh, existing. And then we'll have the, the demolition drawing. Or actually, the demolition can just be shown here, and then the, the new drawing, just by having the same floor plan. Okay. So what else do we need to add for the new things? Okay, it should be enough. We have elevation. Oh, we don't have a floor, right? We need to add the floor. Bottom of this. 
Level 1, let's add the floor. Create similar. Add the floor from here. Here to here. Okay. It will be in the new construction. Okay. And then check. We don't have a roof yet. So let's add a new roof, a small roof here. Let's go to the level two. And let's add a small roof right here. Let's create a roof. Architecture, roof. Roof by footprint. Okay, and uh, use this. We'll have a smaller, okay, same overhang to be fine. Here and there, there, okay. And now what's gonna happen? Okay, and then we'll just draw a line here, okay? Draw a line right there. Okay. And then we'll remove the slope here. Which we don't need a slope right there. Okay, and then we click the check. Okay, we actually have a roof now, really. So the roof will be something like this, okay? But of course, you want them to be connected. This is not the way to, to have a correct roof. So how do you do that? You have here a tool under the roof, this one. Join and unjoin roof. When you have two different roof, you can connect them, and it will become nice, like that one that you see in the video. They connect like that okay so we'll do the same click this and it will tell ask you to select the the line the edge that you want to attach to the roof okay so for example this okay and it will tell you where where do you want to attach it which is this click seven cancel wrong side right. again click this Let's take this side, okay, and then take that side. All right. Part of the roof to be joined misses the target face. I think it's too high. It's just too high. Let's just edit this roof, okay? Because it goes there. It goes beyond right there. So we will adjust this. Go to the level 2 plan. Edit the footprint. We'll just bring this okay. here, up to here only, okay? So it will not uh, hit that. And we'll have it, um, actually that's okay, the height is okay, okay? Now let's do the same thing in the 3D. It should go well now. Click this, join group, select this line, and this face, Why? Part of the roof to be joined misses the target face. Not hitting it. Mm, maybe it goes too high there. Maybe. Okay, so let's cancel that. Don't worry. We'll modify the roof. Let's just make it a simple roof like that. Okay. So let's go to the uh, level 2 again. Modify this. Edit the footprint. I will remove this slope, okay? So it will be two-sided roof like that. And click check. And you know what to do when this happens, right? PD. How do you connect this? Lift it up there. Select this wall. Attach top to base, right? Select. Okay. So it's now closed. Right there. Then I think this will already close. Let's uh, do this again. Join and join group. Select this line. Select that group. There you go. So that's how you do connecting group. So look at this. This is properly cut. It did not overlap to the inside of the group. Okay. So that is one way of creating a joining group. Okay. So this roof is a new construction. Okay will not be demolished. So let's add a few windows here as new construction.
let's say we split this wall. Split, split this here, here, here. Because I want to have a big window there. So let's say this, I will convert it into glazing, right? Storefront. I will have a nice big window right there. Okay. If I want to have another nice window here, I can also do a cut. Simple cut. No need to... See if we want something like this. Say full from the bottom. Then you just select this and choose your storefront, right? Something like this. Okay. Maybe it's not the best looking house, but it should be fine. So these are all new construction. We are showing in the 3D view, we are showing all, right? But if we say uh, this is the face of new construction. So if we say existing so that is the existing see you can easily show your client for example your client mr hasley this is your house right now okay but we need to demolish some things so what is that demo So this will be the walls that will be demolished. The one in dotted line will be demolished. And what the other things that you see here, this will be newly constructed. Okay. So the rest will be built. So this is a newly the, the cover. The one that will uh, uh, cover the removed window will be this one. And you can have a nice shelf there. And then. So this is... Uh, Demo plus, what is it? Demo plus new, right? So the demolished and the new constructed. So for example, you have a commercial space. Some parts will be demolished and some parts will be new. So you can show something. Like that. You just play with this facing. Okay? So it's something that you can just keep practicing, but the, the way how to do it is something that we have shown. Okay? You can actually save this view of the demoli dem demolished and the new construction, which is this. This is actually a view, a 3D view that you can save already. You can have one view like this. And what do we do? We can click this. Some controls are bugging us. Can we remove this? Hide looping meeting controls. So this can be saved as a 3D view. You have this thing. Click that. Save orientation and lock view. So you can you can name this as what what should be the name? Demolish. Demolition and new construction. 3D view one. Okay, we'll try to create another view. Okay, so this is now locked. You can see that I cannot rotate it anymore, but I can still zoom in and out. Okay, so I can duplicate this view actually. Where is it now? In the 3D view, it's right there, right? I can right click here and I will say duplicate the view. Okay, this is the same view now. I can unlock it, okay, unlock the view, rotate it on the other side to show the other side. And then again, I will save it, save orientation and lock view. I will name this, rename it here. Very low, very high. I can't see it anymore. So long. Why can't I name it? And 
So this will be view number two, right? View two. There. So I have two views now, demolition and construction, 3D. View one. This is view two. And I can open the view one. There you go. View one and view two. And these things we'll put in a paper later on so that we can print and we can show to the client. And then we can add another one from this as well. Duplicate the view. So we'll unlock the view. We change this now. This will be showing complete. Okay. So this is the completed project. This will be new construction. And then save it again. You see the logic, right? Save orientation and lock view. Where is it now? Rename this. Completed. Okay. View one. Okay. Lock it. It's already locked. Duplicate it again. Unlock the view. Rotate it to the other side. You can appreciate the other side. And let's show complete already and lock it. Save orientation and lock view. That would be view number two. Easy as that. View two. Okay. So this. You can actually do this as well, not just for architectural. You can do for structural. You can do for MEP. So, for example, it's usually happening. You have how many cameras? You need to remove these cameras and replace it with new ones. You will have some new conduits, new cabling. So, this is something that you can do similarly. Of course, it's a lot of more work when it is electrical because you have all of these. Right? But it's the same strategy. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, let's take a short break because I think Srinivas needs some coffee, okay? <laughs> you no know, pun intended, okay? Let's have a short break, let's have coffee. When we come back, we'll go into the uh, documentation. We will document this uh, uh, project that we demolished and uh, new construction, and then we'll we will document also the building that we are working on. Documentation is faster, don't worry. Okay, let's take a short break. I will pause the recording so it doesn't take so much minutes. There are our meeting controls now. <laughs> I lost the meeting control. How do I put back the meeting control? How do I show the meeting controls now? <laughs> Where are the meeting controls in uh, Zoom? Mm -hmm. What happened? You didn't plug in? Just wait. We'll try to fix it. Oh, what happened to Arcella? Um, there is the controls. I lost the controls. Did they stop the recording or what? Wait, I need help. We lost the control.
if I just log it out and record it again. Oh, there's not anything. There it is. Okay. Okay. You are still screen sharing. Okay. Just pause the share. Oh, yeah, now I'll have some coffee. Yes, sir, but I need to open the go. You can open the door. You can open You can open the door. 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 You Yeah, where I saw them. This from the lens. It's a long photo. That one. That one here. Near okay. the thing. No, it's near. But I'm meeting you. So this has come from outside. From far. If you look here, it's far. What's the far? So it has two far. Two far. So this is like progressive lens. Ah. That's what they call progressive. So they come down. If I remove this one, yeah, but near, near, okay. Little bit, near. little bit. So you have little power near. So I use this one. Okay. I need one glasses, but uh, I said I need only the one for me. Ah, uh, well, for computers and reading, not uh, going outside. Like, uh, it's been blurred. So I need something like this that if I look far away. Because my eyesight is like uh, uh, far away to me. But I can feel that there's a difference. Here is blurry also. Yeah. Here is sharp. Here is uh, 4K. Here is uh, 60. Here. You need to show them that you download the one for the business. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit. Besides mm -hmm. that, you're a good bus student. Yeah. And you download, not the free download, mm -hmm. you go on up to the integration. I don't know what that was. Hmm? I don't know. No, 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 it's already installed. Oh, okay. He needs to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Now check this. Mm -hmm. You'll just tell me that I'm downloading it. It's already downloaded. It's on. We'll just download it. But it's not installed. It's not installed. You can get a download like this. Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> but the good thing now, you have the, the, the license, you can download the old version. In 2020, you can download it. Oh, okay. For time, then you can only download the latest, 24. But now you have the student, 
This comes at the very last second. What do you do? Any process every day? How many months? This is already been. But I'm not from your business of the people. Now you will not download any trial version, right away, student version. Did you pay coffee to your reading brother? I only have a little camera. I have a little camera. You're not doing installation as well. What do you think? We have some invite to the people. We have workers. I'm telling you. Installation, we have to do it. So this is in the room. But we have to do it. We will do the thing. I think we are going to be able to get the data. I think this is in the data. But the we the server is fixed. Yeah, yeah, I think mean, yeah, you have uh, equipment yeah, in the old room. Yeah. That's it. Inside the same thing. Inside that the entire thing. So we need to come down whenever it's a connection. I think it's challenging for all buildings. Yeah. 
Maybe you would need one of this, the, the blind, yeah. you know. So, so your plan is Maybe you can decide to run away. Maybe. 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 Most and then for the disability graphics, you can the sign of your children, please sign 
no se quiere la realidad de un So the problem is maybe you have remain this block block. Let's say they get a young close like here. This is the site, you know, uh, everyone but this level of one is kind of individual. Uh, so maybe it can make something. Usually you don't show that land in Okay, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. There's something that we need. And size should be, should be bigger than, yeah, size, right? Yes. Sorry, bigger than medium, yes. That's okay. Example and in, in the side, this is where you put your trees, right? The side. So if you don't have to work here, you can make it up with your trees, something like this. We have put trees here. Now you don't have to move more. You don't see the trees. So here the government is going to make the ball of it, it will show all the on the left line, but not on the other. Well, I mean, it is a side hit, so we can. It's not a right. It's supposed to be ground floor. Like I said, it's not a right. Yeah, but it's going to be seen on the roof. It's good. They should see a day in the world, don't run the world. I don't know. Thank you. 
have to decide this diagram. Then give us Okay, we are going to talk to our lecture. Documentation. Okay, so we have two projects. One project is a project which is having some documentation on new construction, and the other project, which is the big project we are doing. We are building project. Yeah, it's a big one. Okay. David. Uh, this is a totally new construction on it. Right? We'll take this big project first so that we'll concentrate in the documentation of this small project. Okay. Close this. Save. And well, then we. Are uh, dealing with documentation, of course, you need to have a sheet. Okay? So, for this small project, let's put all the drawing that's more than eight meters. So, if you go to your page uh, here, and you turn your sheet, what you find is giving me the A1 that and you can go to you have a type of block. I think we can do it. So this is our page blue size paper. It is transferred to our small Okay. So I think if you want to use it for your own company, okay. So we not so we want to table table that. 
So maybe if you want to change this to, let's say, uh, student name, you want to put your student, you, you instead of client name, it would be student. Mm -hmm. So we'll now load it into a project and close. So we have only one project open, so automatically goes to the project. Say yes. Now we can start a new sheet. This is now 101. Right there, and you can change the name of the sheet yeah. later on. Okay, so what this is the good thing about Revit 2024. This is a new feature, it's not available in the previous uh, versions. So let's say if we want to put the four 3D views here, go to the view tab, 
you can uh, go to the you can go here okay you can actually select the four four views okay drag it right there it goes in before this is not possible it's not possible before but, but as you know the sizes are a little bit big so we can go back here and we adjust the size first the scale is 1 okay. to 100 so let's make it 1 to 200 200 is a smaller scale okay. and we don't want to show this uh, it's okay 100 okay that's 200 yeah. Okay, now let's go back to the sheet and let's bring them in. There's another way to bring them in as well. You click sheet here, okay, uh, in the sheet, you're putting a view, right? You click place view, it will let you choose the views here. It's almost similar to dragging and dropping. Yeah. So we take this view, the 3D views, and we select these four and we click OK. There you go. And you can adjust mm -hmm. and you can put them. Still a little big, but uh, you know how it how it is, right? I think it's just the window. We can actually go back to the views itself, and we can switch on the uh, uh, crop region. This is the crop region. We can make it smaller, so it will be will not be taking so much space. We do that, that should be fine, and then you hide it. Okay, let's go to the other. Okay, show again the test it. If you want to show this box, then it's fine. But uh, usually, if you don't want to show it, you just uh, hide the crop region. Okay, go to the third one. Do the same thing. This is taking up the space because it's uh, wide. Now it will fit in the sheet. And gonna show and the last one. But if we did this in the beginning, remember before we copied and duplicated it, we don't have to do it like like this right now. But now you you know the sense, right? How these things are done in Revit. So you will develop your strategy later on. Yeah, and if we go back to this. So it's now easy to arrange the, the views. We can actually just delete them and bring them in again as new. Right? Boom. Okay. Little adjustment here and there. You just pull it out. Select this. Use your arrow button. Easy. Okay. You can change the scale as you like. And you can rearrange it. If you want one scale to be 200, one scale to be 50, one scale, different scale, it's fine. And why is it that the scale is not showing here? If you want to show the scale here, you will just have to change the um, viewport with the title. Oh. There is another um, family that we need to load if you want to show the scale right away. But if you don't want to show the title or if you want no title at all, you just click, click no title. So nothing right there. If you want everything to have no title, just want to show image, then that's fine. Right? And anyway, the scale will be shown here anyway. Why is the scale not shown? You show the scale. Okay. okay. So that is preparing your sheet. So what else are the things that you do in, in a sheet? So we'll stop this uh, project now. And we'll go to the big project. Okay. Close the file. You can actually just close everything, right? Okay. 
Okay. By the way, this is the first uh, lecture that I did facing. Facing in our basic class. Usually, I don't lecture this. So you're the first class who requested it. So I did that lecture. Yeah, we did, we did use it for project based. Yeah, for the project base. In in previous lessons, it's not there. So this is the first time. Okay. Also for the viewers, they will see this. Okay. Okay. So we'll open the B eleven Arc two. Similar to Asat's building. Look at the three D. So you already know how to do the things, right? Three D and everything. But now we'll concentrate more on the annotation, dimensions. How do we do dimensions? So let's say you're in level one. You want to put dimensions, overall dimensions, on the grid, and then dimension. You must be in the plan view. Level one is a plan view, right? So let's uh, go to your annotate tab, which is this, and you have your Dimension. Let's use a line dimension. Start from here. There. Just like that. You're done. Finish. And need here. Overall. Finish. Right? And here as well. Um, there are also plugins in Revit that does automatic dimensioning. Dimension on its own, but these are plugins that you need to buy, and uh, not so expensive. But uh, it is not available in the default uh, versions of. So let's say that's all the dimensions that you need. Next question: Can you copy the dimensions from one level to the next level? We'll answer that. Let's check first level two. So. Grids can be seen from one level to another because we did not do the grids on per level, right? But but dimensions, they are done only per level. So we need to redo it on the other level because sometimes in the other floor, you want to show different dimensions, right? Different uh, measurements because maybe the layout is different. So that's why grids are different from dimensions. They are both annotations, but grids... You just place them in the lowermost part of your floor, and it can be seen in every floor. So here, we can just actually copy the dimensions that we did from the one level and duplicate it to the other floor. So what we'll do, go to the level one, select, right click, select all instances visible in view. That's all the dimensions. For example, you have extra dimensions here that can be copied as well. So similar to what we always do, copy to clipboard, and you already know this. Align to selected views. You put them in level two, three, four, and even the roof, right? And click OK. You can even put it in the ceiling plan. So now level two, it will have, where is it? Oh, there. Little delay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because it's a render, rendered view. We use this to show the, the finishes, right? We change the finishes and everything. So if we go to the hidden line version. It's like, so that is one set of annotations. So what are the other things that we annotate in, in Revit? So let, like here, this is an annotation family, which is the tag. It's a tag, right? So it's a room tag. So a room tag right there. There are different room tags. There's a room tag with area. So we can actually change that and it will show the area right there. Okay. So if we, we you select all the rooms and you say it has the area, it will show the area. Okay. That is just one. Can you just match this? I think you can. Let's see. Can you match the property of this and that? Yes. Right? Similar to AutoCAD. AutoCAD people, that's what we always do. MA. What else can we do in the annotation? We can actually add the annotate. We can add spot elevation. 
elevation is the elevation of the floor level. So let's say here we put the spot elevation here, which is that that's ten thousand from the ground, right? So we can put here ten thousand. Ten thousand millimeter from the ground. That is the level right there. Okay. And what else can we show? We can also show coordinates. This is for the surveyor. Usually the surveyor needs this coordinate so that he can start his work like that. Okay. Northing and easting. That is just one. We're just showing the sample. And usually for for uh, construction. You've had the experience in construction. When the construction starts, the surveyor is the, the first guy to go to the site, but he needs to bring in his survey drawing to locate the, the, the lines of the project before you dig everything. So that's why you need to give him the proper coordinates because he is using his machine, a total station or DPS machine, to locate where these things are. So if he will place first, that's why in construction you have these grids. That's what they place first at the site. Now here in Middle East, we are modern. We are using these machines. In Maybe in India, maybe in Sri Lanka, in the Philippines, the small construction of houses, they don't use these things. They just put lines, yeah, you know, the threads. No? They will put one thread here, right there. Um, yeah, corner to corner, they will put a, a reinforcing bar, and that will be the marker, like that, until they, until they post it. Okay? But maybe now some of the uh, modern guys, they, they have this as well, total station or GPS. GPS machine is just like a mobile phone, right? Not big as well, right? but it will tell you which what is the... Subordinate, even the height as well, yeah. the level. Actually, I have one friend. This is what he's using. He's from Ghana. His name is BJ. Shout out to JB. He's watching always my video. This is his job in Ghana. He's using a GPS machine. And they go to um, forest. And, you know, in the forest... Uh, you cannot see the everything in the satellite because there are trees, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they need a GPS machine, GPS uh, equipment, so that they can walk under the trees and, and locate things that they need to locate. There. Because this cannot be seen in the satellite. Right? In the desert, here in Qatar, no problem. The satellite can see everything except for the things underground, under the tunnel maybe, right? But in the forest, like maybe in... in, in uh, India, still have so much forest in India. So much, right? Sri Lanka? Have, yeah. In, yeah, in the Amazon, in South America, in the Philippines also, we have so much forest. So uh, you need to have people walking on the ground to identify this thing. Okay? So that is, uh, um, what you call that? Spot coordinates. You can also put spot slope. Where do we put slope? We have the ramp, right? Let's put a slope on the ramp. Where is our basement? This is a ramp. I can put a slope here. A slope right there. See? That's 167 over 100. If you want to change that to percentage, then this will have to be uh, what's that? The edit type. We can show the percentage. Or I think it's in the units. We go to units, shortcut UN, that's units. So we can change the slope here instead of, uh, oh. It'd be showing the degrees, right? Yeah. Why is this showing the, like that? It's showing the, the rise and this thing. Degree should be uh, okay, so maybe we need to modify this as well. If you edit that type, what is it? Oh, the units format we can change it, it can be degrees. 
degrees. So by default, it's by degrees, but this uh, this specific tag that we are using, annotation tag, it is showing the, the slope the percentage. And the same symbols is degree, like that, right? No, okay, let's have decimal places. Have, uh, doesn't really matter for slope, right? One degree is doesn't really matter. Let's have one decimal place, okay? And click OK. There you go, it's 9.5 degrees. So that is, uh, what do you call that? Annotation for spot slope, okay? So you can have different uh, uh, dimensions like diameter, radius, you already know how to put. And what else can you put? Uh, you can use uh, symbols. What are symbols? If you click symbols, by default, the, the default symbol is here is the center line. So let's say maybe this is our center line. I can put a center line symbol right there. What are the other symbols? Here, I have only center line and north arrow. A north arrow is helpful, right? Let's put it in the site plan. You always have this in the site plan, right? Let's put a north arrow symbol. Get the north arrow right there. The simple north arrow. But we can load more, actually. We can load more. And it will bring us to the... There is annotation family, uh, folder. And there are so many... Um, things that you can get here. Let's say North Arrow 2, one, which is a little bit better one. Yeah, yeah. So open that. You can customize one, you can download more as well. Delete this. Actually, I don't have to delete it. I'll just have to replace it with the North Arrow one, okay? And what else can you bring? You can bring a few more. There is architectural, civil, and everything. There is for MEP, mechanical, electrical. You can bring so many uh, things, like fire alarm. You will see the symbol right there. Okay? I will close this now. So that is annotation. If you want to put a special text, a text, just a note, how do you do that? It's text right there, right? Not this 3D text. We have a, not the 3D text. This is a model text. The one. This is the one we use for the signage, right? Uh, here, you need only under annotate, you have the text right here. So under text, you can put a note here. Okay. Okay. This is the icon training center. Okay. Done. Okay. If you want a text with an arrow, the same text, you just replace it with this guy. So it has this arrow now. So you can point it anywhere. Okay. So let's say if you want to have to show that this is like the entrance um, entrance staircase, you can put a text using this actually. You can place it, I can place it like that. Sorry, click this again. That guy here, and you can say entrance, stop, stop, entrance. There it is. Okay. Right there. You want a block? Uh, a box inside it? Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's also here. But it's not here, but you can download it. Um, it is um, loadable. Okay. Like uh, notes and text. Like tags. And then there are also tags in in uh, in uh, uh, Revit. Example here in this plan view, 
I want to put tags. What are tags? Like door tags. You'll put the name of the door, the windows, and everything. So here we have what we call automatic tagging here. We can actually tag all, but you will choose what items you want to tag on. So I want to tag only the doors and the windows and the walls. Okay. Right? And I'll click apply. Okay. So that are those are tags already. So the window it has a tag already, it has the number 16. The walls does not have yet because in the properties of the wall, I don't have a tag here, which is actually supposed to be here. Actually, here in the mark, no? It would be a type mark. So if I put the type mark here, let's say W-1. W-1. Can I have it? If I change one with W dash one, the rest will be updated as well. See, the others have updated. Okay. So let's say this is a type of window. Yeah, this is like, um, what you call it? Our uh, glazing, right? Let's say G dash one. The rest of the glazing will be G one. There's the G one, right? This is another type. So maybe this is G2, G-2. And whatever is similar to that will have a tag which is similar to G2. So this is like an interior wall, so maybe I name it W2. Whatever is similar to this will be W2. Okay. And so forth and so on. So W2, it changed. That's how you populate, put so much details in the drawing. So you can do that also. Since we did it already for level one, if we go to level two, if we tag this automatically, whatever the types that we have in level one will be the same in level two. I thought I was muted. Otherwise we lost everything, right? So now we go to back to annotate and we say tag all. We do the same door tags. Room tag is already there. That's why we don't need to put it. We put the wall tags and the window tags. And we click apply. Okay. There is it. Boom. Delay. Okay. Very slow. Did it right? Tag all. Maybe we did not click OK. All objects in current view. Okay. Door tags. And what's that? Wall tags and window tags. Fly. And okay, there you go. I think I I did not click the, the OK. Mm -hmm. There you go. So Asad now will complete his drawing. Full detail. You can give to your contractor. Give him his uh, quotation. Right? But Mr. Razak, your father, can approve it. Right? <laughs> so the same thing that you can do for the other floors. So now you've done your kits, your, your details. So how do we prepare it to put in the sheet? You rem remember what we did on the previous A3 drawing? Okay. Yeah, but so that it will fit properly, the crop region, we adjust it, right? So put on the crop region, show crop region right there. It's quite big, right? It will take so much space again. So you move it a little bit here. Right? And you don't want to show it. Okay, let's close it like that. Okay. Also for basement, do the same thing. It's a bit big. Want to show the other the, the ramp. 
see what happened when we did the 3D of the text. We did one here. It came here. We should delete this. Here and we go, right? So what we did is basement level 2 and level 1, right? So then 1, okay, go. How much time do we have? We know it's easy to put this in the sheet, right? Move that. And level 2 is done. Basement is done. Site. Okay, let's show the prop region. We did not put any tree. Put some trees. Okay, ready made trees. Just a few. We already know how to put people and everything, right? We did that before. And this guy, we adjust it. That. Sometimes in the site plan, we don't show the, the grid. But if it's up to you if you need to show the grid. Then we unchecked it. And we change the scale. Usually site plan are smaller. Make it 1 is to 200. Right. Okay. Basement, level 2, level 1. Okay. Do we have a 3D view? We have a 3D view. We have a rendering of the interior. How about 3D views? We have many 3D views here. Interior. How about exterior? We don't have exterior. We don't have exterior. So let's have one exterior view. One interior render is enough. Let's have one view from here. View tab, who remembers? Camera, let's take one camera view from here. Do not crop, okay. From here, we're looking this way. That's our view. We will not render it, but we'll put it into realistic view. That'd be nice at least. Okay. In focus, training center. It may be better if we render it, right? Doesn't take so much time. Let's render the view. But we cannot see any tree. Copy some of this. It's good to see some trees, right? At the 3D view, like that, and let's render. We'll keep it simple. We'll just make it uh, medium, make it high, but uh, render 150 dpi, exterior sun only, blah, blah, blah. Make it cloudy, very cloudy. Okay, render. It'll take maybe two minutes. So other things um, in the annotation, we we'll learn them more. We we'll learn more on annotation as we go into the MVP and structure. But these are the basics of annotation. So you have faster computer i7 to render faster. So in our uh, final presentation, in our session number 12, in the last hour will be our presentation and giving of the certificate. So I want you to show your project like this. You'll have a 3D view. Then you will have sheets, right? And later on, I will teach you also how to make an animation walkthrough. Okay, we'll do it uh, in the later on.
doesn't take so much time, but I want you to complete first the structural and the MMT before we go inside the building. I'll teach you how to do that as well. So you can present something like this, the plans, and then if you want, you can have a animation. You going inside the building and looking at You can do that. That is a requirement for the final presentation. Because I need to tell the management that my students learn something. Right? But now we're halfway. Have you learned something already? You need to practice on this. But you already have the basic and you have the videos. When you have the time, maybe when you're on vacation or something. Because now really it's difficult. It, this is for all of the students. The only time that they get to practice is when they are here. After here, when you're in your room, the bed is there, the TV is there, the last. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially for you. You are working long time, right? And for those who have families, when they're at home, baby is there, mama, baba. So you just play with the family. Okay. <laughs> That's why really, uh, uh, for those who are watching this video, they are encouraged to go to the training center because this is where you'll have the environment for training. Even me, when I was a beginner, I tried to train on myself. Difficult to train yourself, right? Because you need to have a good, uh, yeah, we have to have one trainer. But me, my trainer is online. I train myself. But I have to really uh, focus on scheduling myself. Discipline. Otherwise, you will not finish. That is very true for most of the students. If you cannot schedule yourself, go to the training center. That's why in focus is here. You see the building. Right? We are promoting in focus. <laughs> so I think our render is done. Right? And so the image, we save it. We, if you want to adjust a little bit of the exposure, you want it a little bit brighter, make it 11.5. And the rest is okay. Oh, it's too much. Adjust it. I think 12.5 should be. And save the project. Okay, that could be the three D view perspective. Let's name it perspective. Okay, and close. You have that already here. As renderings, you have the perspective three D view. At least we have two renderings now, right? So we have some. We have things to put in our sheet already. So what do we do now? Sheet. See, you already know it before I say it, right? Go to the sheet. You can actually just click this for the sheet. You don't need to go here. Click sheet. And then this time we'll use the A1 metric or maybe the bigger one. So we can put everything in one sheet, right? Let's take A0. Do we get it? English US. T, get the big one, A0. Okay, okay. Hopefully we fit everything here. So let's get basement, level one, level two. We have the annotation, right? And site. Start with four. Okay, let's put everything one time. Let's put the renderings, the two renderings, boom, there you go, so you just arrange it, okay, so these are all in the same scale, so you can actually move these guys, Indeed. Or as you like, right? You can arrange it. And if you want, you're looking for like site um, key plan, right? So let's just do this like a key plan. We'll put it here somewhere. So let's say this is the BJ's key plan. Oh, we can actually duplicate, right? Let's duplicate the site plan. 
21. Duplicate. And let's name this as a key plan. Key plan. We change the scale. Let's make it 1 is to 500 so it's smaller. And then we don't need to show the grids. Hide in view. Category. Even the trees. Hide in view. Category. Okay. So even this, you don't want to show these things. Select that. Hide in view elements. Okay. So let's say that's enough for your key plan. And let's close it. And let's add the key plan here. Bring it there. Let's say you have a key plan right there. Okay. Usually it's just small, small part in the sheet. And then the rest, for example, you have an image. Image can be resized as well. You click that, like that, you can resize it, make it bigger or make it smaller. For me, image can be like here. Yes, it right? cannot. Then double it. This as well. Let's say you want this to be bigger. Because it is already a G, uh, an image file. It's not like a land view. For this, you need to change it using the scale, right? Because the images by default they're in one one is to one scale already. Okay, so let's say here you change your mind, you want to change this to another scale, you can double click this and you go back to you're like in the view already. You can control the scale. You can make it one is to one. Yeah. So let's say you want custom scale, one is to one fifty. You can put here yeah, 1 is to 150 and click OK. That will be 1 is to 150 so that you can fit the drawings properly. So for this, it, it is showing the scale right there because you have different scale. Earlier, it's not showing, right? When we did uh, the other drawing. This is, for example, you want to make it to 150 also custom so how easy is that and notice this the site plan maybe if you want, you want to make this bigger just that is the deal And what else do you need to put in uh, in the sheet? You want to have like a table of contents, like uh, what you call that, sheet list. How do you create a sheet list in, in Revit? So this, you can easily adjust it, right? So on, I will not do everything, you already know it. Just to not waste more time. So let's have a sheet list here. How do you do sheet list in Revit? Schedules, sheet list, right there. Click that. How many sheets do we have? We have only one sheet. <laughs> so let's say we have more sheets. We have only one sheet. Let's add more sheets, for example. Okay. Say new sheet. Just say new sheet. Okay. It will be empty, but just for the sake of having a sheet list, okay? So, uh, close it. The sheets are there already. And go to schedules, sheet list. So, we'll put the uh, sheet number. Sheet uh, number, put it there, and the sheet name on it. That's it. Okay, we don't need to put everything. Okay, there's the sheet list, and close that. Still there. It. Where can you find it here? It's under the schedules. No, I receive the email from there. Receive it. Approve. Congratulations. How many weeks did it take? Two weeks. Do you use it now? Do you already know what to do? Oh, why? 
So maybe the, the image is not clear. Scan it. Scan it using your, your computer. Do not take a picture. Okay? But, but at least if you want to download other things. You can consider. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let us put the sheet list. So the sheet list is here. You just drag it again. Like that. When you put it there, you can actually modify it. You can adjust it like this. Okay. You have the sheet list. You have other schedules. You can create schedules as well. Let's say schedules. How do you create schedules? Schedules quantity. Say so you want to create a schedule of uh, doors. Architectural. Where is the D? Okay. Door schedule. We just name uh, assembly description. Then count will have to be there. Let's put description and then usually height and length width we need only. What is that? Width and then height. Where is height? Each. Right there. Then you can rearrange that. Let's say you want the description to be first. And you want the count to be last, then click OK. There's your door schedule. We don't have any description. You don't want to show that. You can actually just hide that. Okay. When you have this description, etc. And again, in your sheet, you can place that. If you want to move this here, that's fine. And then you go to your door schedule, bring it right here. Okay. And then you rearrange it as you like. So if you have now, you can create schedule of CCTV, schedule of camera, what else? Smoke detectors. And we'll do that again when we do in the M80. Okay, so sort of review. But this is the basic. So now your sheet is ready. You can now print. How do you print in, in Revit? It's right here, right? You can file and you can export a PDF. Okay. And you have the settings here. If you have more multiple sheets, you can. But we'll not print right now. How you CAD? Hmm? Yeah. Ah, exporting in CAD. So let's do that. So printing is easy, right? To export a CAD file, you have the option here to export CAD formats. Okay. Click that. Click DWG. Then just remember this. Click Next. Then you'll have the options here. It will bring you to a folder where you want to put it. Let's say uh, documents in focus and put it right here. So this will be the name. If you want a short name, just say short right there. If you want to specify the name, you can name it right there. Say B11 um, CAD export. Okay. You can choose the type of AutoCAD. If you want newer version, you can put 2013 or 2010. And uh, I should uncheck this. Okay. Save target folder. Oh, no, this is a new thing in 2024. You cannot remove this. Why? 2013 only? How about 2018? Also, no. Hmm. Add current to folder. Anyway, and just click OK. It will be saved as a CAD file, but it will have external references. So it will have the CAD file, the sheet, and then the each view will be a separate thing. 
but yeah. you just put it together. Okay. And you do you use uh, e-transmit in AutoCAD? You know how to use e-transmit in AutoCAD? E-transmit is something that it, it it no yeah it is automatically becoming a zip folder. It's a zip folder and it will include everything in the AutoCAD. All the extracts, all the images will be placed there. We have that also in Revit, which is right here in the add-ins. Yeah, the transmit model. Okay. But to transmit the model, you need to close the file. It cannot be an active file. It has to be a closed, closed file. So what we do, we close the file. You already learned what you need to learn today. And let's try to use our e-transmit. Say yes. But now, how do you do that? You don't have now the interface. You just click on this, you go back there, right? That one, the start thing. And you click transmit model, choose the model. Where is it? In focus 2023, P11 arc one or two? Arc two, right? Arc two. Do not use the one with the extension, that is the backup file. It will be arc two. Where is it? Where is it? We have so much backups. <laughs> you details. Okay. BR2. Where is it? There it is. Okay. B11 R2. What's it? So I'm nearly updated now. 18 June. This is old. Is the updated file. What's the date today? Nine July. Anyway, it's this. It just did not update. Should be this. And open. It's open. Then you have all of these settings. If you want to include the decal image files, you make sure you check this. Okay. And then it's a bit tricky, really. Then you click transmit model. Okay. Yeah. And it will tell you uh, directory. We did not save the directory. So we put the directory where it should be. It should be in documents, in focus. That should be fine. Click OK. And then it's right here transmit models. Sometimes, if the resolution of your computer is not that high, you will not see this bottom part. This is a public service to all the people who are watching this video. Because it happened to me before. I'm transmitting it, but I cannot find this transmit model button. Because the resolution of my computer is so high, my eyes is having a problem. I put it to 150%. I have big, uh, big, uh, I mean, text in my computer. This might be missed, so make sure your resolution is high. Then it will transmit, blah, 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 etc. I think it's done. You click OK. And you can check that. Actually, open the folder. Right there now, the 11 art. You even have a transmittal report. There you go. Transmittal report. This is a blah, 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 transmittal report. So it is very useful, especially when you are transmitting a big file to, to have a rep record. And when you email it, email also the transmittal report. Yeah. So whatever they have in CAD, it's for sure they're also in, in Revit because they are cousins. It's okay. You are done. Close this. Screen sharing has stopped as the shared window is closed. Are we still recording? Yes, we are recording. So that concludes our session for today. Okay. So now you feel you have some of the basics, right? Now we learn a little bit of structural, two sessions only, and then we move into your specialization. MEP. Okay, Hasli?
Asad? Okay. See you next week. And for all the guys who did not connect tonight, I hope you watch and uh, follow uh, follow this video and practice as well so you can be better. And see you next week. Bye for now.